The one thing I think it has cost the Albanese government is its weak moral leadership during Israel's war against the Hamas terrorist group, which slaughtered 1,200 Israelis on October 7. It seems to be trying too hard not to upset its Muslim supporters by, you know, defending Israel, even though race baiters, meanwhile, like Senator Lydia Thorpe, are throwing their support behind the Palestinians, playing with fire by trying to make their cause the Aboriginal one link with their cause, the Palestinian ones. You know, like fighting those whitish colonialists together. I haven't been able to go to Parliament to do my job and stand up against the racist colonial system that we have to endure in this country. We know your pain. That person in our Parliament shames us all. Meanwhile, in Israel, the prisoner swaps continue. Three exchanges so far. One more will come overnight tonight over a four-day truce with an option for an extra day of truce for every 10 more hostages Hamas chooses to release. Now, one thing about this swap needs to be emphasised. The 50 Israeli hostages that Hamas is releasing are children and women, many very old women, all of them civilians, the 150 Palestinian prisoners that Israel is releasing in exchange include terrorists like these teenagers who just stabbed Jewish civilians and this woman who stabbed an Israeli soldier in Jerusalem after saying she wanted to be a martyr and this one disfigured when her suicide bombing attack got foiled, although an Israeli policeman is still in hospital. That difference in the quality of the release of the two sides says everything. Joining me is the country's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan of the Australian newspaper. Thank you so much for coming in. Look, there's now a lot of pressure on Israel to keep this four day truce going. Uh, and America's leaning on it, France is leaning on it. Uh, it's, and almost like even if Hamas doesn't release hostages, what do you think is going to happen? Well, Andrew, <coughs> great to be with you. And I agree the Albanese government's you know, response has been pretty dismal on this, really. It's just had no sense at all of what it's dealing with, no sense of the global crisis and anti-Semitism, no sense of the difference between a liberal democracy like Israel and a terrorist outfit like Hamas. I think Israel will keep the ceasefire going for as long as Hamas can deliver hostages. But I think Hamas has a difficulty uh, locating all of the hostages. I think, sadly, uh, I hope this is not true, but I think quite a lot of the hostages are dead. I think it's unlikely that Hamas will release any military age men. And I think Israel has to go back and continue the job once the uh, pause in fighting is over because they can't uh, operationally go back to a situation where Hamas controls Gaza right, right on their border. Otherwise, they're just asking for another October 7 down the track. I wonder, Greg, uh, it's very easy to be very depressed about what's going on, and, and Jews in particular have a lot to fear with the anti-Semitism around the world. But I wonder whether long term Israel will win this and Hamas will be a terrible loser. I say that because, one, Israel's military campaign is going pretty well militarily. I know about the civilian deaths. But also, no big uh, Muslim power has joined it in support. The only country to do so is, the, is uh, Yemen with the uh, Houthi rebels. Even Iran hasn't done an all-out attack, and Hezbollah in Lebanon hasn't. I think this is... Israel might win this. Well, I think you're right, Andrew. Uh, and, in fact, that's a very cute, acute point of analysis. When this started... Uh, a lot of analysts, myself included, feared that you might get a simultaneous big missile attack from Hezbollah in Lebanon. Israel feared it. Israel feared it. There was uh, intelligence on the ground that um, uh, Iran had instructed its militias in Iraq to go up to the border with Israel and that militias in Syria were doing the same, preparatory to launching a lot of missiles. And then you had the Houthis, who are also Iranian proxies, but it seems to me at this stage we can make a provisional judgment. Iran doesn't want to risk what a strike on Israel would mean. And to give Biden his due, even though he's putting some pressure on the Israelis, he moved two aircraft carrier battle groups to the Mediterranean and he said to the Iranians, if you attack Israel, we'll attack you. And um, even if you're Iran, you've got to take that seriously. 
So I think there's a, a real prospect that Israel will do what it needs to do here and then it can't, uh, it can't leave Gaza again for a long time after that. In fact, you know, to cast back into history, when Israel ran southern Lebanon with the South Lebanon army, its own security situation was much better and the circumstances for the Christians in southern Lebanon was much better than it is now under Hezbollah rule. And the tragic uh, lesson over the last 15 years is that Israeli withdrawal does not produce peace or security. And I think a lot of uh, Arab uh, states have looked at uh, what Hamas has done and think, do we really want to be represented by people like that? I mean, I think even they are flinching from it. So uh, long term, well, it's too early to be terribly hopeful, but still. Now, you were, your piece on Saturday about the government's failure on... Uh, you know, drawing a moral line here is brilliant. I urge people to read it. But let's talk about the Greens. I think they've been even far more disgusting. Um, voting against the motion condemning Hamas. Can you believe that? That's what they actually did. Constantly accusing Israel of war crimes. And then uh, Senator Marion Faruqi posing with a photo of students carrying signs like the one circled here, uh, you know, uh, make the world clean, put Israel in the bin. I mean, like, getting rid of a Jewish state is a hygiene matter. She has since deleted it. But I tell you what, the test is that she put it up in the first place. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, Andrew. This is a disgusting and classical anti-Semitic trope. This shows the deep affiliation between the Greens and the Nazis. It's the same Racial nihilist, hatred. hideous ideology. The Greens are a party of hatred and nihilism and extremism. They shame the Australian Parliament. You know, the ABC calls the ACT party, which has joined the New, New Zealand coalition, far right. They never refer to the Greens as far left. I'm going to for now on. You're absolutely correct. That needs to be done. It needs to be called out. It is disgusting. It is pathetic. And I, I tell you what, Greg... For years, we've had the argument, should the Liberals put the Greens last? And that argument's largely been won in the, uh, in, you know, preference deals. The question now is, should Labor put the Greens last? That'll hurt them because they need the Greens. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Andrew.